Hi, it's Tawny from the Kinsman Free Public Library with today's stories. Normally, I would try and do the ebook versions of these, but I couldn't find the ebooks. So, I decided to use the ones I checked out from the library before we shut down for social distancing. And I thought I would do a whole bear theme going on today since everyone's putting bears in their windows, whether it's a stuffed animal or a silhouette because we're going on a bear hunt. Today's stories are going to be, there are no bears in this bakery, and the bear ate your sandwich. Also, I go before we get started, I will be also linking and bear themed crafts in the description as well as substitutions to help make them a little bit easier. And then uh, for today's rhyme, we'll be actually doing, we're going on a bear hunt with all the emotions. So be sure to check that out too. All right, here we go. There are no bears in this bakery by Julia Sarcon Roach. There are no bears in Little Bear Bakery. I'm the whiskers of this neighborhood, and if it flutters, scurries, or scampers here, I know about it. The name is Muffin, and this is my tail. There are no bears in this bakery. Each night the moon rises, the bread rises, and I rise. The air cools and the sounds get interesting. That's when the night shift begins. Scratch, scratch, squeak is the mouse behind the bakery. Clang, clack, crash, crunch, crunch is the raccoons in the dumpster. Snip, snip, flap, flap, ah is the bats visiting the barber shop. I thought I knew all the night sounds until Last night. Last night, after the sun rolled off the edge of the sky, a mysterious new sound rumbled over the windowsill. I stepped out to investigate. The air was cool like and wet like a dog's nose. The alley was empty. No mouse, no raccoon, not even a bat. The bakery's back window was open like a crooked smile. Grrr. I slipped into the darkness like icing melting down a hot cake. Inside, I listened for clues. Maybe it was a mouse. Mice love sprinkles. Grrr. And that's when I saw it. It was the biggest mouse I had ever seen. Actually, it was the smallest bear I'd ever seen. I was surprised. The bear was surprised. My tail was the most surprised. Grr rumbled from the bear's belly. Up close, the bear smelled like old socks, cinnamon, and adventure. The problem was clear. And I was on the case. The rumbling grew softer and softer until, burp, for a moment, everything was quiet. Too quiet. I heard snuffling sounds behind me. I had a tail. I mean, my tail had a tail. I mean, there was something in the darkness. The darkness had eyes and they were looking at me. My whiskers trembled, my paws shook. Grrr. It was an enormous bear. It smelled like the dumpster on a hot day and rumbled louder than the vacuum cleaner. Suddenly, it was lights out. Everything dark went dark and I couldn't move. I was smushed like a muffin between the cushions. I was in the middle of a giant bear hug. It was warm, like a bath mat in the sunshine. It smelled 
like that bath mat needed a bath. There was a low rumble from somewhere in the fur. Purr. Oh wait, that was me. It turns out big bears like sprinkles too. Light began to nibble at the edges of the window. It was time for naps. Even my shadow was sleepy. I made sure the bears got on their way safely. The sun rose and stretched like a yawn down the alley. The bears rumbled back to the forest. The night shift had ended. My job here was done. Purr, purr. So that's it. Another case closed by Muffin. No bears in Little Bear Bakery. Not anymore. I took care of them. It was a messy job, but I handled it. Now it's time for a nap. By the way, we're out of donuts. The end. And then, the bear ate your sandwich. By Julia Sarcone Roach. By now, I think you know what happened to your sandwich, but you may not know how it happened. So let me tell you, it all started with a bear. The morning air was warm and bright when the bear stepped out of his den. He stretched and sniffed. The scent of ripe berries drifted toward him and led to a wonderful discovery. After a berry feast, the bear curled up in the sunlight and listened to the buzzing of the bees. Before long, he was asleep. By the time the bear opened his eyes, the buzzing had become a rumbling. He was being quickly swept along like a leaf in a great river. The forest disappeared into the distance and high cliffs rose up around him. Once the rumbling stopped, the bear found himself in a new forest. There was nothing like he'd ever seen before. This forest had many great climbing spots. The trees were still itchy here. The good bark, there was good bark for scratching. And the mud squished nicely under his feet. There were many interesting smells in this forest, but some of the tastiest had already been found. Leafy green smells led the bear to new fun, and that is one he saw it. There it was, your beautiful and delicious sandwich, all alone. He waited to make sure no one saw him, not even the sandwich, before he made his move. It was such a great sandwich, the bear loved it. But just as he was almost finished, he heard sniff, sniffle, slobber, snort behind him. He had been seen. The bear was so surprised that he ran out of the park and down the street until he spotted a very tall tree. From the top of the tree, the bear could see his forest. It was time to go home. The waves rocked and the bear began to doze. When he opened his eyes, he heard the breeze and familiar branches and the birds and the bugs evening song. Well, the bear made it home just fine. So that's what happened to your sandwich. The bear ate it. I saw it all. I tried to save your sandwich. I was able to save this little bit of lettuce here. The bear dropped it as he ran off, but I couldn't save the rest. I'm sorry to have to tell you about your sandwich this way, but now you know. Woof, woof, the end. All right, like I said, there will be crafts 
down in the description along with the links to any templates and directions that I find as well as their substitutions. And today's get up and move rhyme is going to be we're going on a bear hunt. So watch out for that one to go up. Thanks for listening.